Picture this. You are on a tropical island, sipping on your favorite drink and enjoying life. But suddenly, your phone rings. There is a problem with your application and you need to fix it. But you don't have your laptop with you, you just have your iPad. Don't worry, I got you covered. Today, we are going to see how we can develop almost anything on our iPad thanks to VS Code and GitHub Code Spaces. Hi everybody and welcome back to Code Day. I've already made a few videos about Code Spaces on both Visual Studio Code Spaces and GitHub Code Spaces. You have the link up here and in the video description, as well as deliver some presentation on the topic. And every time I got the same questions from the crowd. Does it work on iPad? What limitation would I have? And can I really develop something on my iPad? For these reasons, I decided to get myself an iPad and try it out for you. Today, we will see what is possible and what isn't, what experience you can expect with code spaces on an iPad, and if there is any limitation you should be aware of. Before we start, make sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, and if you want to learn about DevOps, especially with GitHub and Azure DevOps. Just click on the subscribe button below right now and turn on the notifications so you will not miss any new videos like these. First of all, I want to say that I'm using the iPad with an external Bluetooth keyboard and mouse. While the mouse is really optional, you can definitely get away with just the touchscreen, I think the external keyboard is really a must. When you don't have a keyboard connected, in fact, the on-screen keyboard is too invasive and covers half of the screen. Also, it slows down the typing too much for you to be really productive. This is why I'd recommend you to get an external keyboard that is compatible with iPad if you're planning to use it for development. I'm using a Microsoft Wedge mobile keyboard because as you can see, it's very compact and so I can take it with me anywhere. But any other would do as well. All right, let's jump into code spaces. All right, here we are on my iPad. For this video, I'll be using Edge as a browser instead of Safari. And the reason for it is, is because GitHub Code Spaces works best in a Chromium-based browser like Edge or Chrome rather than Safari. So let's open this up. And I will use this repo, which is a simple Node.js application to showcase the features and the limitation of Code Spaces on iPad. Let's go to Code, open with Code Spaces. And since I don't have any code space, let's create a new one. Here we are in our Code Space environment. As you can see, it looks identical on when you use it on Mac or computer. Let's open up a file. As you can see, it doesn't only look like, but you also have the syntax highlighting over here. And even better, you do have the full IntelliSense depending on the language you're using. In this case, as I said, Node.js. One thing you've probably noticed is that there is this gray bar at the bottom. And this appears every time you click on an area in which you can type like the file you're editing like in this case, or even the terminal down here. And this is somehow annoying because it hides the very bottom part of the window. So you would need to scroll up in order to see it. Not a very big deal, but it would be better if this doesn't happen. And this bar is just the keyboard shortcut bar in which you can show your on-screen keyboard or do other operations like that. As soon as you click outside of an area in which you can type, it disappears. Right, let's see if we can debug this application. Let's click on our debugging, run and debug, and start with Node.js. We can see down here that the debug console started, and if we go to the code spaces properties, we have a surprise. As you can see here, the ports have not been forwarded. Usually when you start a debug, or when you run your application inside a code space, the ports that the application uses are automatically forwarded to your localhost. And this, unfortunately, doesn't always happen in an iPad. What you have to do in these cases is just click on the port and then click on the plus. This will add the port to the forwarded list. So this is the first limitation. Second thing is that if you click on this small globe icon over here, which usually should open a browser and let you browse your application, that doesn't work as well. And same if you try to click on the URL that is in the debug console. The reason for it is, is that there is a strong pop-up blocker implemented in every browser inside iPadOS. And so unless you turn off completely the pop-up blocker and pop-up control, you will not be able to open a new tab, even from a legit source like this. Also, if I try to copy this address and paste it in a new tab of the browser, as you would do on computers, this doesn't work. There's currently no way for tunneling remote ports into localhost inside iPadOS. 
So how can we browse our application? The workaround for this is to go to the terminal and use this command npx code space is port and the number of the port you're using. In my case is 2345. This will extract the full URL of the remote code space you're using as you can see on screen. So now I can actually copy the full URL, paste it in the browser. And as you can see, now we are actually connecting to the forwarded port on the remote code space. And here we have our application. Let's go back, stop the debug, and let's, for example, change this message. Hello, YouTube viewers. Let's restart the debug. Again, Node.js. Let's go on the other tab, hit refresh, and here we go. The change has been applied. So let's go back here, stop the debug. And what I want to do now is try and execute a Docker image of this application. So let's change this to something different. Hello, YouTube from Docker. Let's open the Docker file, right click, or if you're using the touchpad, just do a long tap. And here you have build image. You can assign a name to the image. In this case, hello node latest is fine. Let's press enter. And now our image is actually being built. All right, our image has been built. And as you can see here, the port is being automatically forwarded. But again, if we open this in the browser, nothing will happen because of the same problem we've seen before. Let's go to the Docker extension. And as you can see here, we do have the hello node image that we've just created. We can expand this and now we have the latest tag which we created less than a minute ago. Let's try to run this, right click and run. The hello node image is now running as a container and it should be running on the same port as before, the 2345. So we should be able to just come over here, refresh this and yes, we can see the application running inside Docker. So this works as well and I have to say it's pretty cool. Remember, we are running this on an iPad. Let's go back. I didn't mention it before, but as we have the Docker extension and the other extension in here, you can come to the extension pane and install any other extension you want. For example, let's say I want the Markdown extension. Let's search for Markdown and install the extension we want. This extension is installing and now we have it exactly like we would do in VS Code or in code spaces in either Mac or Windows. Last thing I want to try is the Git experience. As you can see here, we have 52 files that have been somehow changed, but some of those are in the node modules. Let's try to add this to the Git ignore and then commit the rest to the repo and see if it works. So let's start with this. Let's add it to the Git ignore, right? This seems working. And let's go back here, open the Git ignore and ignore the full folder. As you see, the save is automatic. You don't have to do anything for saving. And we know this because now we only have four files in here where previously we had 52. Let's try to commit this with the meaningful message. Let's commit. Oh, this pop-up actually works because it's more of a dialogue than a pop-up. Let's confirm that we want to commit our changes even if we have not staged them. And here we go. Now we have committed to the local repo. Last thing, let's try to push them to the remote. And if we look in the small lower left corner, we can see that it's been done. So now our remote is synchronized with the content of our code space. Lastly, let's disconnect from this environment. We can either click this button over here or this disconnect over here. In my case, since I have the GitHub app installed on the iPad, will bring me to this one. If not, it will bring you back to your repo. All right, that's it for today. As you've seen, there are still few limitations and workaround needed when using code spaces on iPad, but I would say it works well enough to enable productivity and mobility. Although I will probably not use an iPad as my main development machine. So what do you think about this? Is it good enough to enable you to be productive? Let me know in the comment section below. Few links in the description. Sure. But I'd say it worked well enough. Mm. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Hit the like button below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I see you in the next video here at Coder Dave.